Good afternoon everybody, how you doing? It's me Paddy from Across the Shuck and you're very welcome back to the channel. And today what I'm going to do is continuation of my collection. I haven't done one for a while so I need to keep getting these out. So what I've done, I've picked locking knives. Uh, modern and not so modern locking knives. Um, now I've got between 25 and 30 locking knives now. That's where I'm going to stay uh, for the rest of the time. Uh, and I'll upgrade them, there's nothing wrong with them. I still love my locking knives, but I've sort of got enough that will do me. But what I've done, I thought the best way to do it is in two parts. So the first part, which is my more modern ones and all, I decided I would go by blade category, starting off at the um, lower, but that doesn't mean bad. It's just the lower blade steels going up to my highest blade steel. Um, and I just thought that would be an interesting way to put it down rather than just fire a whole clatter of knives down and it's sort of the thing that it's it's i know i don't collect twos and threes of things but, and i sort of just proven it by putting these out um i naturally buy things that i haven't got because i like to have them some of the steels i never need but i like to have them so i'm going to start off at the bottom and uh, this is by no means bad it's just the bottom this is in 7cr and this is the shred lb3 which is the the smaller version of you know it looks like the buck when it came out shred all the other companies copied the book and this is just a copy it's it's a small knife i can get three fingers on it but it's a real sod now you can see this one's being used i bought the second hand so or traded i think it might even have been in a trade but it's a cracking little knife and i know it's only 7cr but it takes a wicked edge on it and it will do me because i can sharpen so that's the smallest one and let's just go along now right the next one is a 440 series so this is 440a from rough rider another little lockback uh, lovely little lockback lovely little fifth pocket knife this is a takeout you're not going to scare anybody knife it's 440 again wicked little edge in these things and it will do it as a fifth pocket to take out to cut bits of string or open a box or do anything like that they're perfectly functional knives they're just a little bit smaller so 440 again another steel that i don't mind at all let's go to the next one the next one is a really nice one now this is my almar uh, now unfortunately this is one of the uh, chinese made almars but i'll have to say uh, as in most chinese knives nowadays these used to be made in Taiwan, or Japan even, Japan, Taiwan, <coughs> I think it might be, yeah, Japan. I don't know where my sore throats come from, but it's not sore. Um, so this is my, uh, this is an 8CR13, and it's the perfect steel for a little pocket knife like this, but I love the bone. They really, the Chinese have really made a lovely job of this knife. It's virtually the same as the original would have been from Almar. I love it. Really, really beautiful knife. Although I think Almar used uh, Ozzyat. So 8CR13 Ozzyat, somewhere about the same. Um, but this is a beautiful little knife. I, to be honest, most days I could carry this. And if I'm, you know, not going anywhere important, you'll often find this in my pocket as a pretty carry. And I, it's not going to scare any sheeple. Now, we're going to start going up now to one of my favourite budget steels and this is 440c an absolutely super steel ganzo really they seem to heat treat them okay um i've had this for six years this is a fantastic knife it's just a beater but it's a fantastic knife it's a fidget knife um absolutely beautiful knife uh again i, I used to love my ganzos and this is one of the you know i've got a couple still left this is just the perfect knife. I mean, I didn't have a PM2. This just took the place of a PM2 until I got one. And uh, it's actually more comfortable than the PM2. It's rounded over edges. It's a little bit shorter in the handle. So the blade to handle ratio doesn't look so odd. Fantastic knife. 440C I love. Sharpens easily. You can use it, sharpen it in a couple of seconds and bring it back to life again. So that's the Ganzo. I'll put that up there. And then another little small knife that I've just got recently. Um, I don't even think I've got the review on this one. But this is the Spyderco Dragonfly. And this one's in VG10. Another super steel. I really enjoy VG10 for the fact that it sharpens so easy. 
takes a wicked edge and it lasts quite a bit longer than these up here. Maybe not that much longer than the 440C, but definitely these other three, this will last a long time. I just, you know, it's such, it's a four finger knife. Isn't that ridiculous? I can get four fingers on that and it's a real comfortable hold. So very, very nice. Very pleased to have that in my collection. That's for my pajamas bottoms or pair of shorts. That's what you want that for. And last of the small ones is another just recent one. I've done a review on this. This is the old timer uh, Bruin, the old timer Bruin. And this one is in D2, which is an absolutely fantastic steel for a pocket knife, I guess. This is quite happily an EDC knife. This will do everything I need to do in a day. Again, full four finger grip, beautiful done there. And if I want to get right up, there's not a problem. Uh, because it's a locking knife and it's in a back lock. So there was like one, two, three, four. Um, this is five back locks in the smaller knives. So I think I like back locks. I've got more in there, but I just didn't want to um, do doubles of any steel. So there you go, D2. So now we're getting up to our steels that most people use now. There's very few um, modern knife users, uh, locking knives, that will go below anything of that. Um, because you're coming in 12 CR and uh, 14, sorry, 12 C27 and 14 C28 are these sort of budget knives now that are coming in most knives that are in that low end of the category. And they're both fantastic steels. Um, I don't have any in this lot here. No, I don't have any. But I would have. There, there's nothing wrong with that steel. The next one I'm going to bring out, which was last year's budget knife or this year's budget knife because uh, I'm going to carry this all year. Uh, can't see me getting rid of this. I'm sorry, this is the Kaiser T1. The original was in titanium. This is in my cart. Uh, costs about 60 quid or something. I'm not sure what price it was. But it's in that budget uh, to medium range. What a fantastic knife. Flat ground, down to a really good edge. It's not super, super thin, but it's a good edge. Great slicer. Just a great user. Good blade stock. Um... And it's not an ultra fine tip, so there's plenty of work in this knife. I love it. And the action is that. Deckin' fantastic. <laughs> Kaiser have had a great year and they've brought out so many good knives. And I keep wanting to buy them, but then I realise, no, I don't need to. So I like this having this as my sort of budget knife. The next knife was my grill and will always be my grill knife, the Benchmade 940. I can't say enough good things about this knife. It's 20 odd year old. It is just a fantastic work knife. You can pry, poke, use it as a screwdriver and it just works on. It's a super knife. I love the green aluminium. Yeah, there's some of the fancier ones out there now, but I just love this one. I love the feel of it. Uh, I've got one of their deep carry pocket clips on it, which is just fantastic. The access lock is as good as a day. I got it. It is fantastic. I just love this knife. Great work knife. Will never leave. Um, the next one. Oh, sorry. That, the, the Kaiser's in 154cm. And the Benchmade 940 is in uh, S30V. Two of my favourite budget steels. And then the next one is going up the step. This is the Chris Reeve Sabenza 31. And this one's one of the original ones of the 31. This is still in the S35VN, but the harder version. Their original S35VN was a bit softer. This is up a couple of notches. Um, doesn't make a huge difference in the edge retention, but there is a difference. And I've took this down to a 15 degree per side edge. Um, young Erica was saying that she had been given information that that was good to do for the, the Chris Reeves. And absolutely does it make a difference. Really, really does. Lasts longer down at that. It strains that. It works better down at that 15 degrees per side, even though it is a softer steel. But when I'm saying softer, I think this is 5960, which is not bad for S35VN. I don't have any problems with the longevity of using it. I just love this knife completely. I just adore it. Beautiful knife. Box elder scales on this one. Little lanyard adore this knife if you ever get the chance to hold one maybe you maybe you'll not get a chance to own one but if you ever get a chance to hold one 
please do because it's such a lovely knife that um the opening of the blade and the closing of the blade just on your thumb stun and your finger on the way back it's just glorious it really is lovely and then another new one that i've got recently is this this is the wii version of the elementum with the flicker on it that was a really poor it comes out much better than that the detent's good in this fantastic knife um i i can't get all my four fingers on it but the third one's just sort of hanging off the back but if i sneak up i can get it on no problem and i'm quite happy to sneak up there i feel comfortable i'm pulling back away from the blade you can see with the blade not a problem whatsoever just a lovely knife and this is in 20 cv so it's the perfect edc if you want the longevity of use for a day this is the one that you're going to want uh, again the action on it is absolutely super really is super and the next one which is going up to that one 20 cv i said that this one is m390 which is the same as 20 cv basically in its makeup this is my Cherbakov small stretch. I call it a small stretch because the normal stretch is flipping huge. This one is beautiful. It's like a bronze titanium uh, open backspring, little backspacer, backspacer with uh, the five little lines there. And then them little lines are repeated over on this, which is such a simple thing, but it just pleases me no end. This is just a lovely knife. And I could make a drop shot, eh? Oh. But I don't want to drop shutty. I'd rather been able to do that in that hydraulic sort of motion. And the reason that it's the washer, and when I took this apart when I first got it, the washer was built up quite a lot with green and it wasn't best. So I sanded it down, not sanded it. I put it on my ceramic stone and rubbed it. But I didn't take it back to completely shiny because then it would drop shut. And I don't need this knife to be a drop shut. It's just so smooth on the way down. I absolutely adore this as well. And I think you're getting the theme of my video. I adore all these knives. These are all fantastic. And they're in my collection because I like them so much. The next one is brand new. This is the Jack Wolf knives. And this is the liner lock version, which is why it's in this. There's the liner lock in it. Beautiful scale. Beefier than the original Midnight Jack, uh, which was the gunstock pattern as well. Same, Everything's the same except this one's beefed up a bit. It's bigger in depth, bigger in length absolutely so comfortable a one-bladed uh, stockman is such a comfortable knife your two fingers go on the front plenty of room you can move them about wherever you want your fingers to be and then two in the back and this is a workhorse and it has a pocket clip this is going to be available this friday unfortunately here in the uk we haven't got a a, a seller for this month for these knives um you'll have to get them in europe or America, if you want, if you have a, a chosen dealer in America who has these, you know, use whatever you like. Um, these are a little bit dearer. They're gonna run you around, um, I would say three twenty-five, somewhere around that. Don't quote me on that. I haven't done the exact figures because we don't have a figure in pounds. But it's three hundred and fifty dollars, whatever that equates to in pounds, and then whatever it equates to in Europe, uh, in the euros. But this is just, a, it's a fantastic knife. It's not my cup of tea, as in, it's not a knife that I would sort of pick because, oh, flipping hell, I done it. I opened the top flipper. I have been practicing, but it, it's more for you that I've been practicing than me because I'll never use it. <laughs> Once this video is over, I'll just do it like this. To be honest with you, there's not a problem. I'm quite, I do that with most knives, even these knives I take out, but this also, Gives you the middle finger flick, which I do like, which I do like. I'm not keen on uh, washers on traditional or even modern traditional, but as you, as you've seen my video, it is still a fantastic knife. The fact that I'm an old fuddy-duddy and I don't want to do top flicking, I'm going to try once more. <laughs> First time ever, two in a row. Oh, I love videos. I love making videos. Two in a row. I have not done that. I honestly have only opened it about eight or nine times with that top flipper, and that's two in a row. So there you go. There you go. You're seeing it in its full glory. A stunning knife by Ben. Really is lovely. I love that pop of colour with a long, um, it's not a back spring, uh, and uh, the pocket clip, which is lovely in titanium as well. 
lovely pop of colour and right the way round. Just super nice. Look at that. Look at that. Straight up the hay diddle diddle. Love it. Beautiful, beautiful knife. Just top flippers, not for me. And the last, but my newest. Was this before? No, I think the Jack Wolf's new. This is the one before the Jack Wolf. And I haven't done a video on this yet. And this is the Spider Co. I've forgotten the name of it. Ah oh dear, we nearly got through the whole sage. I am even brighter than I thought I was. Um, the, the Spider Co. Sage, and this is a Sage one, I believe, which was the liner lock, which was a Chris Reeve integral. Chris Reeve invented the. Um, no, it, it's not the Chris Reeve integral. Stephen, you idiot, Mister Walker done this. The Chris Reeve invented the. Um, the frame lock and I think I think it was Mr. Walker that invented the uh there was an interview somebody done on Blade Show this year if you go back he was the inventor of the liner lock uh, this is a beautiful knife but and it's probably one of the most comfortable spider coats I've ever held I like that the fact that it's meaty I like the fact that it's G10 um but this is just a stunning knife and it's stunning for one thing and it's this beauty here. This is in, i just get that up to you. This is in Maximate, Maximate. Now I have Magnacup, but it's not in a, a locking knife, but this is in Maximate, which is gonna be one of the hardest use knives you're ever gonna need in your life. This will cut for days. I was eating my steak with it the other night. You can actually see it does mark up. I wonder, I don't know whether you'll see it or not. But you can see the darkish grey, you can see the line, the grey line where I was cutting my steak. And um, this is not stainless. It's quite good at being stainless, but not stainless. And it will mark up when you put something hot on it. You'll definitely see that marking up. But. I haven't given this a real beating yet. I can't wait to do it. Um, really enjoying it. The grey G10 is just lovely. And I'm actually, I like this pocket clip. Most of the Spider Co, in fact, most of any companies that do the, the wire pocket clips, I don't like them. They, they just don't feel comfortable in my hand. But this melts in there. The, the end of it is, because it's not right up to the top, the end of it is in the fat of my hand. So it's not annoying me at all. Now, I wouldn't want to do three hours work with a knife this size and you really shouldn't be doing three hours work but you could um i would put a pair of gloves on i'm going to go for three hours with any knife but this is gorgeous i really love it i love that leaf shaped blade it's not as high a ramp and your thumb fits in perfectly but you've also got the jimping here as well liner lock works absolutely access to it look at that that's how a liner lock should be done the access you put your whole finger there and it just closes down lovely. So there you go. So there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. I was right. There's thirteen of my um locking knives. This is the first. I'll do another video, but I didn't want to mix up any steels. I've I've doubles of these steels, but very few, which I was really glad to see. Because even subconsciously I'm buying to fill gaps that I haven't got and blade steels that I haven't got. Um, and there'll be different blade steels in the next one as well, um, like the sack knives. So you're going to see my lock and sack knives and things like that. So I'll probably do that next week or the week after. I'm just trying to get them out so that I have a, a visual um, countdown of my collection. So you'll also see um, Paddy McKnife Face. You will see Nelly the Elephant, who I keep rubbing to try and help my memory. And we have a picture of the king. King Charles there so now I'm gone for a wee cup of tea well I'm not actually I have a cup of strawberry water or a glass of strawberry water and um, I'll put a link for the Jack Wolf knives down below this video there'll be a link for the European dealers if you want American go on to the Jack Wolf site and you can go on and he has you can get the list of every dealer throughout the world I'm going to put the European ones down below for you and um, please check them out if you want to get one of these and Try not to leave it because there isn't that many extra being given to Europe because the UK has closed. 
So there will be a rush for these. And if you're a modern knife collector, you're going to love this. You're going to, I mean, I love it and I'm not a modern knife collector. I'll just probably never use this again. And most of the time I'll open my knife like that. Strange, but true. How you can change. So there you go, folks. That will be down below in the description. Um, if there's any you want to see videos of again, please let me know and I'll squeeze them in somewhere along the line. All the very best. Paddy's gone. Thank you. Bye.